A powerful new Photoshop plugin drops, Duolingo is doubling down on animation, and OMFG, an Adobe competitor, just gave us all a huge gift that might make you rethink your software choices. It's Motion Mondays, giggity. But first, a bit of MoGraph history. Do you know which studio produced this iconic and often copied spot for the iPod Nano back in 2006? Stick around until the end to find out. Camp MoGraph's Australian event just wrapped up, and by all accounts, it was incredible. The next one is in Chicago from September 12th to 16th, and unfortunately, it's already sold out, so plan ahead for next year. One of this year's highlights was the first ever opening title sequence for the event, created by Duncan Elms from Elastic and a dream team of artists. The sequence showcases mind-blowing simulation work, organic particle animation, beautiful typography, and surprisingly clean renders considering how shallow the depth of field is. Elastic, in case you're unfamiliar, is known for title sequences like The Last of Us and Game of Thrones, and maybe most famously for their True Detective title sequence, directed by Patrick Clare, which set a new standard in the industry. The Game of Thrones main title also won numerous awards and set the tone for the entire series. This Camp MoGraph opener continues that legacy of excellence. It's a testament to how the event pushes the boundaries in both the conference and motion design spaces. It's actually a very unique event. So congratulations to the Camp MoGraph team on this amazing milestone. I'm excited to see what they'll create for future events as they continue to inspire and innovate in our industry. Magnific, known for its superior AI upscaling, has launched a Photoshop plugin. This tool can transform a 1K image into an 8K highly detailed image, though it often requires some post-processing to clean up AI hallucinations. I recently used it to upscale a photo bash I made for my daughter's book she just wrote, and the results were awesome. It's particularly effective for non-human subjects, offering detail far beyond Photoshop's built-in upscaler. However, be cautious with human faces because it can produce some very weird soulless versions. Despite this limitation, it's an invaluable tool for adding polish to still imagery work. The plugin is now available through Adobe Exchange, though it does require a Magnific account. It's significantly better than Photoshop's built-in upscaler, and it integrates seamlessly into the app. This could be very useful for motion designers working with still imagery, so give it a spin and let us know what you think in the comments. I'm really curious to see how this tool continues to develop. I recently discovered Jerry Lee Bozeman's, a Dutch designer who's worked with major brands like Apple, Amazon, Meta, Google, and Target. His work is absolutely incredible, showcasing a remarkable knack for color. Jerry's designs blend classic graphic design principles with modern sensibilities, creating a three-dimensional feel, even in simple images. What I love is how his work pays homage to the foundational principles of design while feeling thoroughly modern. His impeccable sense of composition and color creates depth that's almost tangible. Jerry's work is a reminder that mastering design fundamentals can produce timeless, yet cutting-edge results. One cool thing about Jerry is that you can buy prints of his work, and he often shares free phone and desktop backgrounds on social media, which I have taken advantage of. If you're looking for inspiration, especially for gradients, color palettes, and interesting textures, definitely check out Jerry's work. His approach demonstrates the enduring value of design basics in our tech-driven industry. Jerry, if you're watching this, you are an absolute killer, and we would love to have you on the podcast to discuss your design approach. Duolingo is doubling down on animation. They've just acquired Hobbs, a Detroit-based design studio and sister company to Gunner, which Duolingo acquired in 2022. Hobbs is known for cutting edge animation, including impressive drone shows. We actually covered this a few years ago on a live stream with Hobbs that dove into how they used Cinema 4D and some custom tooling to pull off this very impressive music video shot in real life and using drones for animation. The link to that is in the description. This move from Duolingo is more of an aqua hire, buying the company for its talented team rather than its products and its revenue. Duolingo is at the forefront of interactive animation using tools like Rive for expressive real-time character animation and lip sync in their app. With the demand for these new types of motion design skills outpacing the supply of artists, bringing Hobbs on board is a smart move. This acquisition signals a trend of large companies integrating motion directly into their products, recognizing its power to increase user engagement and conversions, aka sales. It's an exciting development for motion designers, opening up new opportunities in the tech world. So congrats to the Hobbs team. Duolingo sounds like an awesome place to land, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this acquisition further develops the app's animation capabilities. It's clear that interactive animation is becoming increasingly important in tech, showcasing the growing value of motion design skills. A recent viral post claiming Cartoon Network is dead 
caused quite a stir. Animation Workers Ignited, a community-run account, shared this message to raise awareness about industry issues. However, it's a bit misleading. Cartoon Network isn't dead, but it has changed significantly. The network even issued a statement clarifying that rumors of its demise were untrue. This campaign was meant to highlight challenges faced by animators, including high unemployment and job insecurity. The merging of Cartoon Network Studios with Warner Brothers Animation has raised concerns about the future of original content. If you remember, during COVID, animation became a lifeline for many production companies, and lots of money went into it. Artists benefited. But as the economic bubble burst, many artists were laid off. And this situation, I think, reflects both corporate decisions and economic realities. For motion designers, it's worth noting that this primarily affects animators working on shows and films, much less so those in advertising or product design. However, it demonstrates how economic shifts impact various animation sectors. My hope is that we're nearing the end of this industry downturn and that both motion design and traditional animation will soon see an uptick in opportunities. The summer 2024 session of our interactive guided courses just kicked off and our students are already getting pummeled by our challenging and insanely effective curriculum. To give more artists a chance to start their motion design journey, we're offering another interactive session of our two entry-level classes, After Effects Kickstart and Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed, starting August 5th. These courses, taught by world-class instructors Noel Honig and Jake Bartlett, feature real-world exercises and unlimited critique from our amazing teaching assistants. It's like having your own personal motion designer giving you feedback and support throughout the session. Plus, you get access to our 24-7 student community, monthly live streams, and more. What sets our courses apart is the level of interaction and support. You're not just watching videos, but you become part of an online community of like-minded artists getting real feedback from industry professionals. Whether you're just starting out or looking to refine your skills, these courses are designed to help you level up fast and build a strong foundation for your motion design career. Sign up now for the August 5th session. It'll be here before you know it, and we can't wait to see you in class. Here's an interesting AI story that could eventually actually be useful for motion designers. Christopher Fryant, a 25-year-old digital artist, recently experimented with Runway's Gen 3 video model to create Luma mats. Luma mats, oftentimes created from ink footage, have been used for decades to create organic transitions in motion design. Check out this tutorial from Sonduck's YouTube channel demonstrating how cool this technique can be. The idea of using AI to generate these assets is intriguing and potentially very useful. One challenge with traditional footage is the lack of control, but AI tools might eventually allow for more art direction. However, my attempt to recreate this using Luma AI's Dream Machine did not yield the desired results. The current limitations of AI tools are evident. It's hard to fine tune the output or keep what you like while changing what you don't. But despite these challenges, I see potential in this application of AI. In a few years, we might have a powerful tool for creating customized organic Luma mats. What do you think? Could this be useful in your workflow if the control improves? Let me know in the comments if you see potential in AI generated visual effects elements for compositing. I recently discovered Gabrielle Calvi, an Italian freelancer with an impressive 2024 showreel. What stands out is how Gabrielle's reel establishes a unique style while showcasing versatility. You can always feel his creative fingerprint, which is a challenging feat. The reel features great animation, but what really caught my eye was the exceptional editing. The music choice, match cuts, and overall energy work together seamlessly. Editing is a superpower that many motion designers overlook, but it can significantly elevate your work. It's also a bit of a cheat code because good editing can make your motion design feel more energetic without requiring as much animation work. If you're in a creative slump, I'd recommend checking out Gabrielle's reel for inspiration. Try to dissect why the edit works so well. You can find the link in the show notes. Give Gabriella a follow and keep an eye out for an editing class that we're soon releasing for motion designers. This reel is a great example of how a well-crafted showreel can not only showcase your technical skills, but also establish your unique style and brand as a motion designer. Here's an interesting find from our good friend Ryan Plummer posted in our internal Motion Mondays channel. Pixel Composer, available on Steam, which is not exactly the obvious place to find design tools. It's a node-based pixel art generator, editor, and VFX compositor for creating complex effects in a pixel art style. It supports physics, fluid simulation, and more, all for just 10 bucks. This niche tool showcases the internet's ability to cater to specific needs. While pixel art and After Effects can be tricky, Pixel Composer is purpose-built for it. If you're into pixel art, by the way, check out our workshop with Fraser Davidson of Cub Studio, 16 bits of character animation, action, and nostalgia.
Fraser breaks down his Super Johnny 100K piece, which is an homage to 8 and 16-bit side-scrollers, sharing workflow tips for character animation, how to get snappy movement, and how to create that cool 16-bit look. The link's in the description. So maybe give Pixel Composer a try and let us know what you think. It's really exciting to me to see specialized tools emerge, especially when they cater to styles that are not well served by mainstream software. This could be a great addition to your toolkit, particularly when combined with other tools like After Effects Arrive. It's time to spotlight our School of Motion student of the week, Sonia Estal. Sonia recently completed her animation bootcamp final project, working with boards designed by the talented team at Ordinary Folk. This is no small feat. The project involves dozens of boards with multiple animation options and complex transitions. Simply finishing is an achievement, but Sonia went above and beyond. Her piece showcases great use of reinforcing momentum and eye trace, along with all the other animation principles we talk about in that class, guiding the viewer's attention effectively between shots. These principles are crucial for both designers and animators, roles that often overlap. We're incredibly proud of Sonia's work and excited to see what she creates next. Her project exemplifies how our students learn to apply classroom principles to create professional level work for their portfolio. Keep an eye out for Sonia. She's definitely a rising talent in the motion design world. Congratulations, Sonia, on your awesome final project. We can't wait to see where your motion design journey takes you next. And now a huge story. Serif, the company behind Affinity Photo, designer and publisher, just made a bold move. A six month free trial of their software suite, no strings attached. These apps are available for Mac, Windows, and iPad, and they offer seamless file transfer between desktop and tablet. Now, having used Affinity Photo and Designer, I can attest to their impressive performance and modern architecture. They're non-destructive, very powerful, and they have a rabid and growing fan base. And the biggest draw? A one-time payment instead of subscriptions, currently at 165 bucks for all three apps. And get this, there's a 50% discount until August 15th. Now, why the incredibly long trial period? Well, they're clearly directly challenging Adobe, capitalizing on recent Adobe controversies. It's a smart strategy to overcome the inertia of switching from familiar tools. This move follows Canva's acquisition of Affinity in March, which signals that they're aiming to compete with Adobe in the professional market. Canva, a company that does billions in revenue, can now underwrite this free trial, which will undoubtedly cost a ton of money in the short term. But long term, this is a pretty genius move. While Affinity tools don't fully integrate with Adobe's ecosystem, they do offer some cross compatibility. They lack some Adobe features, but excel in others. And some may see this as a positive, but there are currently no AI features in the tools, though I suspect that will change pretty soon as Canva has deeply integrated AI capabilities. In any case, it's a low risk opportunity to try new tools that could potentially work really well for you. So what do you think? Have you used Affinity products? How do they compare to Adobe's offerings? Let us know in the comments. And that wraps up this edition of Motion Mondays. Here's the answer to our trivia question. The iconic iPod Nano spot from 18 years ago was created by Exopolis, a full service branding agency. They employed Jason Whitmore and Brian Holman who later went on to found We Are Royale. Exopolis pitched and won this Apple project, which was then directed by renowned director Mark Romanek, and the spot was groundbreaking when it debuted, setting a brand new standard in motion graphics. Jason and Brian took the experience gained from this project and established We Are Royale, which continues to produce top tier work. And while We Are Royale has evolved since its founding, their output remains consistently impressive, featuring outstanding design and animation. This legendary piece of MoGraph history showcases how influential work can shape careers and studios. Thanks as always for tuning into Motion Mondays. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to catch our weekly updates. And remember, our After Effects Kickstart and Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed courses start August 5th. Join us for an interactive dive into motion design, and I'll see you next week.